In the realm of religious discourse, few topics spark as much intrigue and debate as the comparison between Islam and Christianity. These two Abrahamic faiths, while sharing a common spiritual ancestor in the prophet Abraham, diverge significantly in their core doctrines and beliefs. This divergence is particularly evident when we delve into their respective views on the pivotal figure of Jesus Christ. Understanding the nuances of these differing perspectives is crucial not only for fostering interfaith dialogue, but also for gaining a deeper appreciation of the rich tapestry of human religious experience. This exploration aims to provide a concise yet comprehensive overview of the Islamic perspective on Christianity with a particular focus on the Islamic understanding of Jesus by examining the historical context, scriptural interpretations and theological arguments that underpin these beliefs. We hope to shed light on the common ground and points of departure between these two world religions Join us as we embark on a journey into the heart of this fascinating interfaith conversation, seeking to bridge divides and promote understanding through respectful inquiry and open dialogue. At the heart of the divergence between Islam and Christianity lies the question of Jesus' nature and divinity. Christians revere Jesus as the Son of God, the second person of the Holy Trinity, and the embodiment of God in human form. This doctrine of the Trinity, central to Christian theology, posits that God exists as three co-equal and co-eternal persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Islam, in contrast, upholds a strict monotheistic belief, emphasizing the absolute oneness and indivisibility of God, or Allah. Muslims believe that Jesus was a human prophet and messenger of God, chosen to deliver God's message to humanity. They hold him in high regard, acknowledging his miraculous birth, his teachings, and his role as the Messiah. However, Muslims categorically reject the notion of his divinity or his being the Son of God. They argue that such concepts contradict the fundamental Islamic principle of Tawhid or the oneness of God and are not supported by the Quran, Islam's holy book. This difference in understanding Jesus' nature has profound implications for the respective beliefs, practices, and worldviews of Muslims and Christians. In the following sections, we will delve deeper into the Islamic perspective on Jesus, exploring the Quranic narrative, the significance of his miracles, and the reasons behind the Islamic rejection of the Trinity. The Quran, the holy book of Islam, presents Jesus as a highly esteemed prophet and messenger of God sent to guide the children of Israel. He is referred to by his Quranic name, Isa, and is often designated as Isa, son of Mary, Isa ibn Maryam. This emphasizes his miraculous birth and distinguishes him from other prophets. The Quran narrates the story of Jesus' virgin birth, a miraculous event that Muslims accept as a testament to God's power. It describes the angel Gabriel appearing to Mary informing her of God's will that she would conceive a son without a father. Mary's initial disbelief and subsequent submission to God's command are highlighted, emphasizing the extraordinary nature of this event. The Quran portrays Jesus as a compassionate and wise teacher who conveyed God's message with eloquence and authority. It highlights his miracles performed by God's permission as signs of his prophethood and God's power. These miracles included healing the sick, raising the dead, and bringing down food from heaven. Muslims believe that Jesus' message, like that of all prophets before him, 
was a call to worship the one God, Allah, and to live a life of righteousness and submission to His will. They view Jesus as part of a long line of prophets, including Abraham, Moses, and Muhammad, peace be upon them all, who were all sent with the same fundamental message of monotheism and moral guidance. The Quranic account of Jesus' virgin birth is replete with details that emphasize the miraculous nature of this event. It describes the angel Gabriel appearing before Mary in the form of a man, causing her to seek refuge from him. Gabriel assures her that he is not there to harm her but to deliver a message from God. He informs her that God has chosen her, purified her, and exalted her above all women of all nations. Mary, astonished, questions how she could possibly conceive a child when no man has touched her. Gabriel explains that God creates whatever he wills, and that for him it is as simple as saying, be, and it is. The Quran goes on to describe the birth of Jesus, with Mary seeking seclusion and support beneath a date palm tree. She experiences the pain and anxiety of childbirth, but God reassures her and provides for her needs. The birth of Jesus, without a father, stands as a powerful testament to God's creative power and his ability to transcend the limitations of the natural world. Similarly, the Quran attributes Jesus' miracles to God's power, emphasizing that Jesus performed them by God's permission and not by his own inherent divinity. These miracles are seen as signs or ayat for those who witness them, confirming Jesus' prophethood and God's omnipotence. Section 3. The Islamic Rejection of Jesus' Divinity While Muslims revere Jesus as a prophet and messenger of God, they firmly reject the Christian doctrine of his divinity and the concept of the Trinity. This rejection stems from the fundamental Islamic principle of Tawhid, the belief in the absolute oneness and indivisibility of God. Muslims argue that the Quran, which they believe to be the final and uncorrupted revelation from God, explicitly denies the divinity of Jesus. They cite verses where Jesus refers to God as my Lord and your Lord, emphasizing the distinction between himself and God. Furthermore, Muslims point to the logical inconsistency of attributing human qualities such as birth and death to an eternal and all-powerful God. They argue that the concept of God having a son contradicts the very essence of God's transcendence and uniqueness. The Islamic rejection of the Trinity is rooted in the belief that associating partners with God or shirk is the gravest sin in Islam. Muslims believe that God is one and only without any partners, equals or offspring. They view the Trinity as a deviation from the pure monotheism preached by all prophets, including Jesus himself. Section 1. The Bible, a source of truth and corruption. The Islamic perspective on the Bible is nuanced and complex. Muslims recognize the Bible as a sacred text containing elements of divine revelation, particularly the Torah revealed to Moses and the Gospel revealed to Jesus. They acknowledge the historical significance of the Bible and its role in shaping religious thought. However, Muslims also believe that the Bible, in its current form, has been subject to human interpolation and alteration over centuries. This belief stems from several factors, including the existence of multiple versions of the Bible with contradictory passages, historical evidence pointing to textual variations, and the Islamic understanding of God's preservation of his final revelation, the Quran. Muslims do not view the Bible as wholly unreliable or entirely corrupted. 
they believe that it contains remnants of God's message, albeit mixed with human additions and interpretations. They approach the Bible with respect, recognizing its historical and spiritual significance for Christians. However, they do not consider it to be the final or authoritative word of God. Muslims believe that the Quran revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as the final testament confirms, clarifies, and corrects any distortions or inaccuracies that may have crept into previous scriptures. Section 2. The question of preservation and distortion, the Islamic belief in the corruption of the Bible, is not meant to disparage Christianity or its adherents. It stems from a theological understanding of God's nature and his relationship with humanity. Muslims believe that God, in his infinite wisdom, revealed his message to humanity through chosen prophets throughout history. These prophets, including Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad, peace be upon them all, delivered God's guidance. But their messages were often distorted or forgotten over time due to human error, negligence, or deliberate alteration. This, Muslims believe, is why God revealed the Quran as the final and perfectly preserved revelation meant to supersede and clarify previous scriptures. The Quran itself alludes to the alteration of previous scriptures, stating that some people distort the words from their proper usages, Quran 446, while the Quran does not specify the extent or nature of these distortions, it emphasizes the importance of relying on the Quran as the ultimate source of truth and guidance. Muslims believe that the Quran's miraculous preservation, both in its original Arabic language and in its entirety, distinguishes it from previous scriptures. They view this preservation as a sign of its divine origin and its status as the final word of God. Section 3. Discerning Truth The Quran as the guiding light Given the Islamic belief in the partial corruption of the Bible, Muslims turn to the Quran as the primary source for understanding God's message and discerning religious truth. They believe that the Quran as the final and perfectly preserved revelation provides a clear and unambiguous guide for humanity. Muslims recognize that the Bible contains valuable moral teachings, historical narratives, and insights into the lives of prophets. However, they approach these elements with a critical lens, comparing them to the teachings of the Quran and the authentic traditions of the Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. In cases where the Bible aligns with the Quran and the Prophet's teachings, Muslims accept and uphold those teachings. However, when contradictions or inconsistencies arise, Muslims prioritize the Quran and the Prophet's example as the ultimate authority. This approach reflects the Islamic emphasis on seeking knowledge from its most authentic sources and relying on divine revelation as the foundation for religious belief and practice. The Quran, in this sense, serves as a guiding light for Muslims, illuminating the path towards truth and clarifying any ambiguities or distortions that may exist in other religious texts. Section 1. The Genesis of the Trinity, Seeds of Contention The concept of the Trinity, so central to Christian theology, did not emerge fully formed in the immediate aftermath of Jesus' ministry. In fact, the early years of Christianity were marked by diverse and often conflicting interpretations of Jesus' nature and his relationship to God. 
This period, known as early Christianity, witnessed the gradual evolution of theological doctrines influenced by various factors, including Jewish and Hellenistic thought, internal debates, and the socio-political context of the Roman Empire. The seeds of the Trinity doctrine can be traced to the gospel accounts themselves, which present Jesus making claims and performing miracles that hinted at a unique relationship with God. However, these accounts were open to interpretation, and early Christians grappled with how to reconcile Jesus' humanity with his seemingly divine attributes. Some early Jewish Christians, known as Ebionites, maintained Jesus' humanity while emphasizing his role as the Messiah, rejecting any notion of his pre-existence or divinity. Other groups, influenced by Hellenistic philosophy, sought to understand Jesus through the lens of Greek concepts like logos, or word, and sophia, or wisdom. These interpretations often attributed a pre-existent divine nature to Jesus, setting the stage for later Trinitarian formulations. The Gospel of John, for example, opens with the proclamation, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, a passage that has been central to Trinitarian interpretations. As Christianity spread beyond its Jewish roots, encountering the diverse religious landscape of the Roman Empire, its theology continued to evolve. The Apostle Paul's writings, for instance, played a significant role in shaping early Christian thought, particularly his emphasis on Jesus' death and resurrection as central to salvation. Paul's writings, while not explicitly Trinitarian, provided fertile ground for later interpretations that emphasized Jesus' divine nature. Section 2. The Evolving Narrative from Jesus to Christ The transformation of Jesus from a Jewish preacher into the divine Christ, the second person of the Trinity, was a gradual and multifaceted process. This process involved the development of Christological doctrines, which sought to define Jesus' nature and his relationship to God the Father. These doctrines were debated and refined over centuries, culminating in the formalization of the Trinity doctrine in the 4th century CE. One key factor in this evolution was the growing separation between Christianity and Judaism. As Christianity attracted increasing numbers of Gentile converts, it began to distance itself from its Jewish roots, developing its own distinct identity and theology. This separation facilitated the adoption of Hellenistic concepts and philosophical frameworks to explain Jesus' nature and significance. The concept of Logos, for example, proved particularly influential in shaping early Christology. The Logos in Greek philosophy represented the principle of reason and order that governed the universe. Early Christian theologians drawing on this concept began to identify Jesus as the Logos incarnate, the embodiment of God's reason and creative power in human form. This identification of Jesus with the Logos had profound implications for understanding his relationship to God. If Jesus was the Logos and the Logos was divine, then Jesus must also be divine. This line of reasoning, while not yet fully formed into the Trinity doctrine, laid the groundwork for later Trinitarian formulations. Furthermore, the increasing emphasis on Jesus' miracles and his resurrection as evidence of his divinity contributed to his evolving status within early Christianity. These supernatural events, interpreted through the lens of Hellenistic thought, solidified the belief in Jesus' divine power and his unique relationship with God.
Section 3, Councils and Creeds, Formalizing the Trinity. The culmination of these theological debates and developments occurred in the 4th century CE, during a period of significant change and upheaval for Christianity, with the conversion of Emperor Constantine in 313 CE, Christianity transitioned from a persecuted sect to the favored religion of the Roman Empire. This newfound imperial patronage brought with it both opportunities and challenges for the burgeoning faith. Constantine, eager to unify his empire under a single faith, sought to resolve the theological disputes that divided Christians. He convened the Council of Nicaea in 325 CE, the first ecumenical council of the Christian Church, to address the contentious issue of Arianism. Arianism, a theological doctrine proposed by the priest Arius, asserted that Jesus was created by God the Father and therefore subordinate to him. This doctrine, while popular in some circles, was deemed heretical by the majority of bishops at the Council of Nicaea. The Council condemned Arianism and affirmed the Nicene Creed, a statement of faith that declared Jesus to be God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. The Nicene Creed, while a significant step towards the formalization of the Trinity doctrine, did not fully resolve the theological debates surrounding Jesus' nature. Subsequent councils and controversies continued to refine and elaborate on the relationship between the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The First Council of Constantinople in 381 CE reaffirmed the Nicene Creed and condemned further Christological heresies. It also expanded the creed to include a statement on the Holy Spirit, affirming his divinity and co-equality with the Father and the Son. This expanded creed, known as the Niceno-Constantinopolitan Creed, became the standard statement of faith for most Christian denominations. The formalization of the Trinity doctrine, while a landmark achievement in Christian history, did not mark the end of theological debate. However, it established a framework for understanding God as three distinct yet inseparable persons, a concept that has profoundly influenced Christian thought, worship, and practice for centuries. Section 1. Conceptual Differences, Trinity versus Tawhid. The divergence between Christian and Islamic theology is most starkly illustrated in the contrasting concepts of the Trinity and Tawhid. The Trinity, central to Christian doctrine, posits that God exists as three co-equal and co-eternal persons, the Father, the Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. This belief is encapsulated in the Nicene Creed and is foundational to Christian worship and theology. In contrast, Tawhid is the cornerstone of Islamic belief. It emphasizes the absolute oneness and indivisibility of God, Allah. According to the Quran, God is singular, unique, and incomparable, with no partners or equals. This concept is succinctly expressed in the Islamic Declaration of Faith, Shahada, there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. The Christian doctrine of the Trinity is seen by Muslims as contradictory to the principle of Tawhid. For Muslims, the idea of God existing as three persons is considered polytheistic undermining the pure monotheism that Islam upholds. This fundamental difference shapes the theological frameworks and religious practices of both faiths. While Christians interpret the Trinity as a mystery of faith that transcends human understanding, Muslims view it 
as an unnecessary complication of God's nature. The simplicity and clarity of Tawheed are seen as crucial for maintaining the purity of monotheism, which is a defining feature of Islam. Section 2. Scriptural Interpretations, Bible versus Quran. The contrasting views on Jesus' nature and divinity are deeply rooted in the scriptural narratives of the Bible and the Quran. The Christian New Testament, particularly the Gospels, presents Jesus as the Son of God, performing miracles and claiming divine authority. Key passages such as John chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, are foundational to Trinitarian belief. In contrast, the Quran portrays Jesus, Isa, as a revered prophet and messenger, but firmly denies his divinity. The Quran emphasizes that Jesus was a human being chosen by God to deliver his message. Verses such as Surah Al Maida, Chapter 5, verse 72, which states, They do blaspheme who say, Allah is Christ the Son of Mary, underscore the Islamic rejection of Jesus' divine status. Muslims believe that the Quran, as the final revelation, corrects the distortions that may have crept into previous scriptures, including the Bible. They argue that the Bible's portrayal of Jesus as divine is a result of historical and cultural influences rather than the true teachings of Jesus himself. The Quran also addresses the concept of the Trinity directly, rejecting it as a misunderstanding of God's nature. In Surah Anisa, chapter 4, verse 171, it states, Say not Trinity, desist, for Allah is one God. This verse reflects the Islamic emphasis on the indivisibility of God and the rejection of any form of polytheism or association of partners with him. Section 3. Philosophical and Theological Implications The differences between the Trinity and Tawhid have profound philosophical and theological implications. For Christians, the Trinity is a complex and mysterious doctrine that represents the fullness of God's nature and his relationship with humanity. It is seen as a divine mystery that cannot be fully comprehended by human reason, but is accepted through faith. For Muslims, the simplicity and clarity of Tawhid are essential for understanding God's nature and maintaining the purity of monotheism. The concept of a singular, all-powerful, and indivisible God is seen as more rational and comprehensible. This clarity is considered crucial for guiding believers in their wor worship and relationship with God. The philosophical implications of these differing views are significant. The Christian doctrine of the Trinity has led to extensive theological debates and philosophical discussions about the nature of God, the relationship between the divine persons, and the metaphysical implications of a triune God. These debates have shaped much of Christian thought and have been central to the development of Christian theology. In contrast, the Islamic focus on Tawhid has led to a more straightforward understanding of God's nature. This emphasis on the absolute oneness of God has shaped Islamic theology, law, and spirituality, reinforcing the centrality of monotheism in every aspect of Muslim life. Ultimately, the differences between the Trinity and Tawhid reflect deeper theological and philosophical perspectives that define and distinguish Christianity and Islam. Understanding these differences is crucial for fostering respectful interfaith dialogue and for appreciating the distinctiveness of each faith tradition.
Section 1. The Paradox of a Limited God One of the primary logical arguments Muslims pose against the divinity of Jesus lies in the apparent paradox of a limited God. Christians affirm the omnipotence, omniscience, and omnipresence of God, attributes that speak to his limitless nature and eternal existence. Yet, the belief in Jesus as God incarnate introduces seemingly contradictory elements. If Jesus was truly God, how could he be subject to human limitations such as hunger, thirst, fatigue, antipathy, and ultimately death? How could he express uncertainty or lack of knowledge as depicted in certain biblical accounts? These questions point to a fundamental dissonance between the attributes of divinity and the realities of Jesus' human experience. Muslims argue that true divinity precludes any form of limitation or deficiency. God, as the creator and sustainer of all things, cannot be subject to the constraints of the created world. To attribute human weaknesses or limitations to God, even in a human manifestation, is to diminish his absolute perfection and transcendence. This argument hinges on the Islamic understanding of God's attributes as absolute and indivisible. If God is all-knowing, he cannot simultaneously lack knowledge. If he is all-powerful, he cannot be subject to weakness or harm. Therefore, the concept of God becoming human while maintaining full divinity presents a logical inconsistency that challenges the coherence of the Trinity doctrine. Section 2. The Law of Non-Contradiction A Universal Principle? Another point of contention revolves around the law of non-contradiction, a fundamental principle of logic that states that a proposition and its negation cannot both be true simultaneously. Muslims argue that the Trinity doctrine, by asserting that God is both one and three, violates this fundamental law. The argument goes that if God is truly one, as monotheism posits, then he cannot simultaneously exist as three distinct persons. Conversely, if he exists as three distinct persons, as the Trinity suggests, then he cannot be truly one in essence. This apparent contradiction, Muslims argue, undermines the logical coherence of the Trinity doctrine. Christians often, often respond to, to this argument by emphasizing the distinction between essence and personhood. They argue that God is one in essence, sharing a single divine nature, but exists as three distinct persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This distinction, they maintain, preserves the oneness of God while acknowledging the diversity of his self-revelation. However, Muslims counter that this distinction, while philosophically nuanced, does not resolve the fundamental logical problem. If the three persons of the Trinity are truly distinct, then they must have distinct essences, which would contradict the Christian claim of a single divine essence. This debate highlights the challenges of reconciling complex theological concepts with the principles of human logic. Section 3. Human Logic versus Divine Wisdom A False Dichotomy The debate between Muslims and Christians regarding the Trinity often centers on the limitations of human logic when applied to divine mysteries. Christians argue that the Trinity, while seemingly paradoxical to human reason, is ultimately a matter of faith and revelation, transcending the limits of human comprehension. They point to the biblical emphasis on God's ways being higher than human ways and his thoughts being higher than human thoughts. This perspective suggests that attempting to fully grasp the complexities of God's nature through human logic alone 
is inherently limited and potentially misguided. Muslims, while acknowledging the limitations of human intellect, argue that God's revelation should not contradict fundamental principles of reason and logic. They believe that God, being the source of both reason and revelation, would not reveal something inherently contradictory or illogical. This perspective emphasizes the harmony between faith and reason in Islamic thought, while Muslims acknowledge that certain aspects of God's nature may remain beyond human comprehension. They maintain that his revelation should be internally consistent and logically sound. This debate raises profound questions about the role of human reason in understanding divine truths and the extent to which faith requires a suspension of logical inquiry. Section 1. Reconciling Differences Respecting Beliefs As we conclude this exploration of the contrasting views on Jesus between Islam and Christianity, it becomes evident that these two faiths, while sharing a common Abrahamic heritage, diverge significantly in the core theological understanding of his nature and mission. Christians revere Jesus as the Son of God, the second person of the Holy Trinity, and the embodiment of God in human form. This doctrine, central to Christian faith, shapes their understanding of salvation, worship, and their relationship with the divine. Muslims, on the other hand, hold Jesus in high regard as a prophet and messenger of God, acknowledging his miraculous birth, his teachings, and his role as the Messiah. However, they categorically reject the notion of his divinity or his being the Son of God, considering such concepts as antithetical to the Islamic principle of Tawhid, the absolute oneness and indivisibility of God. This fundamental difference in understanding Jesus' nature has profound implications for the respective beliefs, practices, and worldviews of Muslims and Christians. Despite these fundamental differences, it's crucial to approach this interfaith discussion with respect, understanding, and a willingness to find common ground. Both faiths emphasize the importance of love, compassion, justice, and peace, values that can serve as bridge, bridges of understanding and cooperation, engaging in respectful dialogue, acknowledging the sincerity of each other's beliefs, and focusing on shared values can pave the way for peaceful coexistence and mutual respect between Muslims and Christians. And Section 2, Paths to Understanding, Dialogue and Shared Values. Navigating the theological differences between Islam and Christianity requires a commitment to open-mindedness, empathy, and a genuine desire to understand the other's perspective, while acknowledging the non-negotiable aspects of their respective faiths, both Muslims and Christians can engage in constructive dialogue that focuses on shared values and common goals. Exploring the ethical teachings of Jesus, recognized by both faiths as a source of moral guidance, can be a fruitful starting point for interfaith dialogue. Similarly, collaborating on social justice initiatives, promoting peace and understanding, and working together to address common challenges can foster a spirit of cooperation and mutual respect. Recognizing the inherent dignity of every human being, regardless of their religious beliefs, is paramount in fostering harmonious interfaith relations. While theological differences may persist, focusing on shared values, promoting understanding, and engaging in respectful dialogue can help bridge divides and foster a more peaceful and just world for people of all faiths. Understanding and respecting the beliefs of others, even when those beliefs differ significantly from our own, is not only a matter of tolerance, 
but a testament to our shared humanity. By embracing the principles of compassion, empathy, and open-mindedness, we can move beyond mere tolerance to a place of genuine understanding and mutual respect, paving the way for a more harmonious and interconnected world. Ultimately, the path to peaceful coexistence lies in recognizing our common humanity, celebrating our diversity, and working together towards a shared future of understanding and respect. Do not forget to tap on the like, subscribe, and share buttons. Also leave a comment.